The stage is set. Tomorrow night, five Republican presidential hopefuls will go toe to toe in Miami for the GOP's third primary debate. But once again, the odds on front runner will not be in attendance. Donald Trump ditching the debate for the third straight time, instead holding his own event, a rally in South Florida. Let's talk about this and much more. Joining me now, Mark Short, senior advisor Mike Pence, also the former chief of staff to Pence when he was vice president. So, Mark, we're down to five Republicans on the debate stage now. What do you think this is going to look like? By the third debate, what do you think they need to be doing if they have any hope of survival? Well, I think you're probably going to have a lot more of uh, a contentious evening between Nikki and, and Ron DeSantis. Uh, I think that the two of them seem like they've sort of separated from Tim Scott, Favek, and Chris Christie. And so that's probably where more of the fireworks will be. Some of the others will look to try to engage more in the debate. Um, but I think that, uh, you know, as time goes on, uh, President Trump's decision to avoid the debates, I think, is unfortunate for voters. But I think politically, it continues to make it look like the rest of the debates are somewhat of an undercard. And so I think that's probably played to his benefit thus far. Do they have to go, like, just guns blazing? I hate any kind of <laughs> analogy like that. But at Trump at this point, I mean, if I, I don't, they are making distinctions or have been trying to, but if they're quote unquote seen as playing nice at all, against Trump even though he's not there. I mean, how do you how do you get this right as a Republican candidate yeah. not named Trump when he's not on the stage? Well, I think it is certainly a conundrum for them because the reality is that I don't think our primary voters really want you to take Trump head on. Um, but at the same time, how do you end up getting traction if you, if you don't? And so uh, I think it, it certainly is a challenge. I do think, you know, something that uh, we discussed some, last time, Kate, is I still think there's this conventional wisdom that says what we need to do is to get down to one candidate to go mano a mano against Trump. But I, I think that that conventional wisdom isn't true in this case. I think as more and more candidates drop out, it creates a bigger inevitability that Trump will be the nominee. And this, this simplistic notion that says, well, there's a Trump vote and an anti-Trump vote, I don't think really applies. I think a lot of the polling shows that candidly for DeSantis, if he were to ever drop out, a lot of his vote would go back to Trump. And so um, uh, the, the notion that, that there's this, a lot of this pressure that says candidates need to drop out and donors want candidates to drop out so we can figure out who to solidify against, I think doesn't really apply in this year's election because I think more and more it probably benefits Trump as the field narrows. It's, I, I have been really, I've been thinking a lot about that analysis that you've been offering. It's really interesting perspective.